As we know, concussions are due to direct or indirect forces that affect the brain. So this can happen in a wide variety of activities. It does not specifically have to be related to collision or high-risk activities. It could be as simple as a child falling on ice in the schoolyard. It could occur because of they, ha they have a sport-related injury. Uh, it may occur due to other factors, uh, playing on uh, sport equipment or playground equipment. But what we have to keep in mind is that there does not have to be a discrete witnessed injury in which we see a major blow to the head. Uh, oftentimes concussions can be very subtle even in the mechanism and it's really more the suspicion uh, that we have to be aware it may have occurred. Again, if a teacher does suspect a concussion, then I strongly recommend that they inform that parent that the child be assessed by a trained health care provider so they can have appropriate medical evaluation and follow-up. It's hugely important to have a, a concussion protocol. We have, um, you know, we have not just student athletes, but we have kids on playgrounds every single day. Um, to be able to have a protocol allows our, our staff, whether it be teaching staff, support staff, administration, know how to deal with it appropriately, how to act, signs and symptoms, um, what to do, and to make sure that we act accordingly and not let students back in too quickly. Any, any coaches of, um, in our high schools, any coaches in elementary schools, our administration, we all need to be familiar with the AFIA guidelines. If you're coaching a, a sport, you really need to have a, a good understanding of, um, of what's safe, what's not, and, and appropriate practice. And that, whether that be regarding concussions, safe play, um, safe coaching techniques, we need to make sure that we're familiar with the AFIA guidelines. Yeah, I think it's especially difficult for kids after a concussion because they have a little less control of their environment than adults. Um, if we were to be placed in the same situation, we might be able to decide who, what is around us and what environment we're in. Whereas kids are expected to be in particular places at certain times and there's a little bit of controlled chaos in a child's life uh, in their home environment and also in the school environment coming to and from school. And there's a lot of commotion and there's typically much motion and you have a lot of uh, constraints and demands on these kids. So. The easy answer is I think any of those standard activities throughout the day can be exacerbating factors and we have to be very mindful of that and very respectful of that. I think that a lot of the symptoms though subtle, nausea, um, dizziness, vertigo, um, generally not feeling well, headache, those are again somewhat subtle symptoms but if anyone has ever experienced those they're also very hardwired and they can be very significant and really make you want to feel you don't want to participate in whatever those things are that are making you worse. So I think the answer is really anything throughout the day might be an issue for them. Well first of all getting on the bus in the morning and with all the commotion of the kids and everyone screaming and talking and um, that really made my symptoms worse and then getting off the bus in the morning and getting uh, sitting in the hall waiting for classes to start um, all the students around me just running around and screaming and that also made my symptoms a little worse and then uh, getting to the classroom and uh, the lighting in the rooms were a big issue for me and I was lucky to have so many really good teachers that they would turn off some of the lights for me if I wasn't feeling the best but um, just trying to stay focused and trying to pay attention was one of the biggest struggles for me. It's definitely tough going to school with a concussion because the teachers can't see it, like you're hurt, like a broken arm or leg or anything that's broken, just your head, it's not visible to people from the outside. So you're going to school and they're still teaching you the same and not, well, they make some exceptions but not a ton. When I first had the injury, the stairs were some of the biggest problems. Going down the stairs, um, I have to hang on to the banister. And so they're in schools, there's stairs everywhere. So kids are having to potentially be careful on stairs as well. And with the jostling of bodies, it could get dangerous. As a person who has, has suffered concussions a few times, the, I have a sort of half an hour period where then it starts to, you can just start to feel it either a headache or sometimes it's the, um, your eyes that start to just kind of wander. So if, if I were a student in a classroom for 75 minutes, four times a day and the lights were on the whole time, it 
with this kind of injury, it would give you a very big headache and it makes it very hard to concentrate too. I love the assemblies here. Terry Fox is incredible, but I couldn't handle it. The noise, the lights, the people, how busy it was, it was too much. Couldn't do it. This was the first year I was able to go back again in uh, three years to one of those. Masses were the same, any assembly at all. It was just too much. So all the things that people look forward to, I dreaded. At school, the, the things that would that wouldn't make me feel that great were if I was watching videos or if there were a lot of loud noises in the classroom. My teachers, they understood they could they could help me out with my work if I needed help and just slow things down if I needed them to. In the classroom, it's really hard to, uh, you feel so under pressure and you feel like you have to finish at the same time as everybody else, but really you need that extra time. And when you're on your own downstairs in a resource room, it's easy for you to pace yourself and take a break every 15 minutes when you need it. And um, you finish the test at your own pace. The amount of work that we give them would need to be the absolute minimal. What they would, what's absolutely necessary so that they don't get too far behind. I think it's really hard to get that as a teacher. You don't want your kids to get behind, so you give them the work. But then by giving them the work, you may be putting them more behind uh, health-wise. So it, I would try to talk to them and tell them that you need to be careful and the health is more important than the work at this point in time. And make sure the parents know that too. So again, I think because of the awareness of concussion issues that we have now, we need really a health care provider to provide us with more information about what they can do and what they can't do. So kids may appear to look okay, and sometimes those injuries are the hardest to detect or even appreciate. So it's important that teachers, coaches, parents have expectations that are in conjunction with the health care provider. So concentration is an issue, so we may not be able to send homework home. We may need to get kids get up and have a break more often than not in classrooms. So if we're aware of how the injury is progressing and what's happened and so forth, and if our teachers and coaches are calling the parents to say, you know, your child's on the bench or they're not getting homework tonight because I just don't feel that they're ready for it, um, and the parent is insisting that they're playing or not, I think that's when the healthcare provider has to help us and say we have to be patient, we have to be understanding and that's why the base level is so important. We want to get them back to the base level and once the base level is there and we get a clearance to say it's okay to play, to work, we can have expectations back to the child and that will be clear for the child as well. We try to provide some standardized recommendations that will allow teachers, administrators to easily follow the guidelines or the recommendations we put forth. I think early on we know that cognitive rest is important. If a child is in school, we need to be mindful that they may not be able to perform all the tasks they normally do or may have difficulty tolerating those. Uh, longer, long school days can be difficult, so rest breaks might be a nice option for them. I think formalized testing probably should be avoided in, you know, in the few days following a concussion. I think that if a child just is feeling uncomfortable or having issue and maybe describing nausea or increased headache, then any of those activities that seem to be inciting that we might want to try to stay away from just to make them comfortable. And again, we only feel we should do this for a short time, so it shouldn't really impede too much in their academic process or progress. So it's really important that we understand the signs and symptoms with all this great information that we have with all the great websites and laptops and smartphones that we owe it to our children to make sure that that we completely understand what we're putting, uh, subjecting our children to. And some of the teachers, they just don't get that. They don't understand that you're in pain and they just think that you're not listening and not trying, but it's hard when you're trying your absolute best and that's all you got.